Hi, it's Jane here from craftforjane.co.uk and today I'm bringing you my Origami Square pop-up card. So if I show you, it's quite an unusual fancy fold card. So it basically, it doesn't sort of stand up on its own. It can sort of sit like that. Um, it's probably more of a note card if you were going to write somebody a little message maybe on the back um, or you could include a flat gift in it. And it's just a cute origami. It's almost like a secret letter, really, isn't it? And I love the mechanism. I love the way it sort of folds and sits together and that you can then just take two corners, pop it out, and it creates this really cute little card. So I have um, made a wrap that sits around uh, the outside, just like that. And um, I'll open this one up for you as well. This one hasn't been open, sorry, this one hasn't been open for a while. There you go. And that one's similar, just a slightly different colouring uh, to it. Um, and I'll fold that one back up so. There you go. I fold it back up like that and pop it back in this cute little uh, wrap that it sort of holds it all together. And it's a nice way of sending a little card or a little note um, and uh, it's a little keepsake. Uh, and you can definitely put something flat in it, like maybe a tea bag gift. If you're gonna send somebody a friend and a, you know, keep your chin up sort of um, card or hope you're feeling okay card. So yeah, I can't stop opening and closing it as you can tell. So I'm going to pop this to one side. This paper is from the um, new Hues of Happiness designer series paper. And this is the, uh, that's in the new catalog, annual catalogue. This is a denim ribbon out of the um, uh, mini catalogue. I love, love this denim ribbon. And I've used the double oval punch here as well, which is in the annual catalogue. So I will uh, be sure to feature that as well. So for today's project, I'm going to be using, because I'm going to be sending a tea bag, <laughs> I'm going to be using a uh, this beautiful new designer series paper in the new annual catalogue called Tea Boutique. It is six by six and it has some, absolutely some tea cups on here. It's got lots of different patterns on the back. Um, it's actually got quite a range of different papers. It's got teapots, lemons, um, beautiful floral patterns. It's got uh, some more teacups there. Um, as you can see, stripes and things like that. Uh, flowers, um, sort of field of flowers. They, they almost look like um, sort of wild flowers, don't they? Uh, some, a really cute retro pattern just here and with some... Uh, just absolutely stunning. This is one of my favourite papers as well. This one here with the flowers and the envelope. Perfect for a paper crafter. Uh, so yeah, lovely, lovely set of papers. So I've chosen to use those. I have, they've got a coordinating stamp set and die set bundle. Um, I have ordered it, but it hasn't arrived yet. So uh, catch up with me again in the next week or two to see some more projects. So this is a piece of garden green cardstock and it's eight by eight because that is the basis of the card. And I'm gonna start off by scoring at two inches on all four sides. So I'm gonna rotate and score as I go along. Rotate and score. Rotate and score. And now I'm gonna score at four centimeters in the center of every one, but only down to that first line like this, four centimetres, but again, only down to that first line and all the way along. Lovely. So now you need to get out your ruler and you need to score from center point to center point to center point to center point again and you basically are making a diamond pattern in the center so here's my ruler I'm going to turn it over because it's got a lip on it my ruler and I'm going to find the point here and take it to this center point do it twice so you can see uh, Taken that center point there to that one. And I'm gonna repeat that until I've got four lines creating my diamond shape in the center. It's quite an unusual, fun little card or notelet or whatever you want to call it. Interestingly, um, one of my customers um, asked me to make some more cards and uh, I straight away go to 
unusual sort of intricate fun folds. I can't help myself. It is definitely something I enjoy to do. Okay, so now I'm actually going to uh, burnish what I can burnish. So I can burnish these. I can't really burnish um, much else. I can sort of tuck that in to either of these sides just here, just for the centre bit. And I can sort of fold in these edge bits here as well. Okay, so now I need to try to get this into a shape that I need. So this is the tricky bit. So I just need it to almost bring these bits in like this and fold that just like that and press it. And then I need to do that all the way along these. So fold it so it becomes like that basically. And then, so it's almost like I'm teaching it, I am training it that I want it to sit in this position. So I'm telling it that this piece here needs to go across there. And then if I start to manipulate it into this position, it will eventually work out that I would like it to sit like this. And then I'm going to press it down and I'm going to turn it over and now I'm going to burnish every piece of this edge like this. So it's now learning that actually this is the way I would like it to fold and eventually it will just automatically, the first couple of times you do it, certainly the first time you do it, it is quite a um, tough thing to do, but eventually it will learn that it wants you to sit in that shape and you'll just be able to fold it up like that. Okay, so layers <clears throat> is my next step. So I have pre-cut, pre-cut quite a few bits here for us. So I've got an insert layer, which I'm gonna call lots of love. I've got a plain one for the back, which is where I can write if I want to. I've got my tea bag my English breakfast Tetley tea bag, which I'm gonna place in the center so that I can still write a message. Um, I've used the stamp set that I've used for this is Celebrating You, which is one of the new stamp sets. And I've used the Thank You and the Lots of Love just there. So I've used my double oval punch and I've done garden green and then my sentiment in the smaller one in white there. And uh, I've already stamped that and glued that just there. So I'm going to get out my multi-purpose liquid glue and I'm going to start doing my layers. So this matte layer and the layer on the back of the card actually measure, they're cut out of basic white and they measure two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So I'll just pop that there and then try my best to find a nice center point and press down. Just take a bit overzealous with the glue on that bit and press down, lovely. And so I'll turn that over and I'm gonna do the same on the back here. So I'm just gonna pop a little bit of glue just, just on the back here. There we go. And then, so you can put some decoration on this if you choose to. However, I have chosen to keep it plain because I would like to maybe write um, a little note on the back of here. But you definitely can stamp anything you want on the back of here. So that's just on there. Turn it back over. And there we go. So I'm. Uh, this is my front, basically. So I need to make sure my layers um, go around the front. So I've chosen this paper. Um, and I've cut, so these triangles are the, mm, so the triangle layers I've done slightly smaller than every other layer. So these are one and three quarters by one and three quarters and I've cut them in half. And that is so that I get the similar size border around them as I will around these squares here. So I'll just pop a little bit of glue. All the measurements will be in my blog. 
which will be uh, down below. Uh, so do follow the links. I have done this project in inches. My school board is in inches, so um, it is the, my choice of um, measurement. Uh, however, I will put a version of metric within, so you can follow that as well. So basically each square is two by two. So I only want a shy border. So my square pieces, which will go in these edges, will measure one and seven eighths by one and seven eighths to give the tiniest of border. But I had to take it down a little bit further to be able to get these triangles to have the same border edge. So if I show you, they will have the same sort of border edge um, when they're stuck down as well. Okay, so I'll carry on by sticking these four in and then I will stick the squares in. So I might try to speed this bit up for you uh, so that you're not too bored watching me stick. Okay, everything is glued on. It's still a little bit damp, so I would actually suggest you let it completely dry, otherwise it can um, sort of allow the cardboard to warp a little bit. So I would personally let it dry before I did any further. However, for purposes of demonstration, I'm actually going to fold it back up and I will um, need to then cut out a piece of the cardstock in the garden green. I have a strip here which is the length of an A4 and it's about an inch wide and I am actually going to put my tea bag inside so I'm going to just pop it like that close this around it again and then I'm going to it makes it a tiny bit thicker but I'm going to do my wrap around that then so I will just fold it I don't want it to be tight tight because I want it to slip on and off if I need it to and then I'm going to trim the excess of what I don't actually need. So I'll squish these sides down, take it off, and then I will be able to attach these two. So I'm probably going to snip it with my paper snips and take off what I don't need, which is this section just here. And then I'm going to pop some of my stamp and seal just on the inside just here. So I'll do a little strip there and I'll do another little strip on the inside here, just like that. 
and then I'll wrap it around the card again and then bring those in together. So I'm going to put this one down first because the stamp and seals on the inside and then I'm going to bring this one across and I'm going to try my best to make sure they line up so that it's straight. cute uh, cute little bow to the side there I'm just gonna straighten up and then when I attach my sentiment that will hold hold the ribbon in place as well so I'm just gonna snip this off two little cute angled snips just there and just there there we go now I'm gonna get some glue on the back of my sentiment and the double oval punch that I've done. I put another layer on the back just to add a bit of strength to this as well. You didn't, you don't have to do that. I just had a spare layer lying around, so I thought I know what I'll do with that. And then I'm gonna turn this over and this will act uh, as a way of holding the actual, um, holding the ribbon in place as well. So I'm going to take it off just to make sure I get it on nice and centered. There we go. And then I'll straighten up my ribbon a little bit as well. Perfect. And I'll press that down until I'm happy it looks straight. There we go. So I'm quite happy that that looks straight just on there. And just give that a moment to stick. And then I'll get out some jewels. So for this, <clears throat> there's lots of jewels that I could pick, but I actually decided because it's such a beautiful pattern um, that I wanted to use my brushed brass butterflies. And I just wanted to mention to you as well. So I could have alternated the patterns here quite easily. So done um, floral teacups, floral teacups, which would have been quite an effective look. However, when you close it, I would have had um, a mix here. So I'd have had two florals and two teacups, which would have been absolutely fine, but I wanted in particular to have the florals. I also almost wanted the tea and the teacups to be like a surprise element in it. So it's completely up to you which way you choose to make this card. So now I'm going to put my little wrap that holds the card in place back on. Just make sure everything's still a little bit damp. So I would make for I would personally wait for things to dry before I'm putting things like this on if I was making the project for myself. But because I'm um, doing it for a tutorial for you guys, then I uh, want to make sure I can get it all done for you to see. So I'm going to get my pick tool out and I'm going to pop some of these beautiful but butterflies on. I think I'm going to pop them on my sentiment strip. So I might pop one here and I've got a little one. Just maybe, how do we think? like that there. It does look quite sweet. And maybe another one just about there or maybe there. Yeah, that's quite cute, isn't it? So you can put as many of these as you want. I wouldn't, I would avoid putting them on the card because you have to get the, um, you actually do have to get the wrap off and on. And if you put them on the card, you could pull them off as you're moving the wrap just there. So that is my um, my card. Okay, this is the project completed. This is the Origami Square pop-up card. This is it open. So I'll just close it like that and open it like that. This is it completed in the same colours. And this is the example that I've shown you today, which is holding, you'll see it's not that much wider actually, but it is holding a tea bag inside. So it makes a cute little uh, gift holder as well. So I do hope you've enjoyed today's uh, tutorial. Um, you can follow the links below in the description. I will put uh, links for the products that I've used and links to my online shop. 
please consider subscribing to the video. If you don't already have a demonstrator and would like to purchase any of the Stampin' Up! products, I would be delighted if you chose me uh, to shop with me. Um, I do send out thank you cards and gifts for qualifying orders. And if you use my host code, I send you out a little gift pack. Um, again, uh, it is, um, I think this video is still going out in May. So it goes out maybe the middle of May. So there is a joining offer that is amazing. Please follow the links to my um, shop if you're considering joining. I would love you to become a member of my team. Um, so I'm going to say bye for now, guys, and happy crafting.